All right, so I decided I was going to share with you how I go about producing a song here in a home studio. And the best way to share that is to show you. Let's do it. So the song we're going to be doing is a song that my wife and I co-wrote. It's called Summertime. In this particular instance, the song is written. We're going to actually produce this song and go through the motions in a home studio. All right, so here are six of the things that I like to get done on day one of producing a song in a home studio. Number one, the song is written before we start. It's we know what the song is. Step number two, chart out the song. So write out the chords to each part of the song, how many times they repeat so that we understand the structure and how long the song is and what parts go in what order. And it's sort of a map of what the song will be. But it's something more importantly to reference, especially if you're using different musicians or if you're switching instruments, it's something to be able to look back at and be like, oh, okay, I got it. Number three, decide on the tempo and the key of the song. This is very, very important to do right from the beginning because you don't want to get halfway through tracking and decide, you know what, I think this is actually, this is actually too slow. Ooh, I guess we could speed it up or we could retrack everything. On day one, make sure that you figure out what the tempo and what the key of the song is. It's gonna make this whole process a lot easier when you know that as soon as possible. Step four, instrumentation. What I mean by this is what is the plan? Like, what do you plan on recording? Do you plan on using guitars and pianos or horns, drums, beats? Like what it, what's going on the song? What's the plan? Have them down as like things that need to be done or things that are completed so you can keep track of this. Step five, session prep. Okay, so session prep, that's on the computer, that's on your digital audio workstation. I'm using Pro Tools. So that would basically mean building my template for what I want the song to be, which you can have a better understanding of what that will be by completing all of the first steps, knowing the tempo, having it charted out, the key and the instrumentation can really help you build a template so that when you start recording and adding on the different sections of the song, it's a lot more efficient. Number six, scratch tracks. So on day one, what I like to do is have somebody or myself play the song from beginning to end and create what I call scratch track. So let's say there's acoustic guitar on the song. I'm gonna play the acoustic part all the way through the song. And then you can add on a scratch vocal. So have the singer just, these are, these are essentially parts that might be replaced later, but they will act as a map to what this song is going to be. You are starting to create the final product and you are laying the groundwork by doing the scratch track. So I'm going to chart the song out. We're gonna pick a tempo, a key, I'm gonna decide on what the instrumentation is gonna be, and I'm gonna prep my session and do some scratch tracks. Let's do it. All right, so I have the song charted out. My session template is feeling pretty solid and pretty prepped at this point. I'm thinking that this song is gonna have a pretty laid back feel. So I imagine most of the song is going to be carried by the traditional input, huh, the traditional instruments in like a four or five piece band, you know, vocals, keyboards, guitars, bass, drums, stuff like that. And then after the meat and the potatoes are recorded and edited, then I'll experiment with some additional production and alternate instruments that we can add into the song. Now that I have the scratch tracks recorded, I'm gonna take a couple of days and try to listen for any improvements on the structure, as well as sorting out what the tag for the song is gonna be. 
I'll tell you more about that in day two. Here's a hot tip for laying down scratch tracks. If you or the person that you were recording is not used to recording to a click, program in a kick, snare, and hat pattern that is just a straight drum beat, quantize the beat, and loop it for the duration of the song. It makes it a lot easier for people who are not used to playing to a click and I promise you're going to get a much more comfortable performance, which is going to make it a lot easier for putting together the rest of the song. So that's it for day one. I like to knock all of these things out and then take a day or so to marinate on the song. The next video is going to be day two, and I'll show you where we will pick up and how the song will develop from this point forward. I'm actually really excited about doing this and bringing you in on my process and how I do it. Everyone has their own unique way of writing and producing and engineering. But I'll tell you what, if you like the video, absolutely demolish that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Make sure to hit subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Hit the notification bell to be notified the next time I upload a new video. And jump over to andrewmastersmusic.com. If you have any interest in booking me as a mix engineer, or if you want, I'll actually play drums on your song here in my studio. You can just take go right to the booking page, book me on whatever day you want to have me do it. Bing, bang, boom. You get sweet drums or a sweet mix on your song, on your project, courtesy of me. I think you should do it. I think it's a good idea. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I will see you in the next one. Shoo.